These kids are juveniles, and normally hearings for kids are not public, but in this case, the boys are charged as adults, and tonight they are both being held without bail here at Prince George's County's Department of Corrections. One source told me it's frankly safer for the boys here. WUSA 9 will not name the boys because of their juvenile status. The two boys in court today were among three middle schoolers accused of being caught on camera pushing past a Prince George's County school bus driver and aide, May 1st in Oxon Hill, acting together like a hit squad to attempt to kill another kid. In court, a detective said the video showed only one attacker with a gun, and the investigator described how the semi-auto pistol jammed repeatedly, likely saving the victim's life as the attacker held the gun to the victim's head and chest while accomplices held him down. The three boys on video then beat the victim and fled, leaving the bus driver and aide terrorized. The two now in custody are the accused accomplices, but they're charged with attempted murder anyway because prosecutors said the boys acted together. And there was this stern warning from prosecutor Aisha Braveport. Keep their parents should know who their children are hanging out with, because even if it's your child, if your child does not have the weapon, but they're with the person with the weapon, they intend to do harm they will be charged as if they had the weapon. We are serious about prosecuting everyone who is uh, a gun offender here in Prince George's County. So what about the gunman that's still out there? We learned from testimony today he's a 15-year-old who has still not been caught. The gun is not recovered, even though he's been handled by juvenile court before and released in other cases. And we also learned that the 14-year-old victim in this case knew his attackers by name, according to detectives, but refused for three days to tell police. Investigators say they identified the masked suspects only after finding out the victim had texted a friend the attacker's names shortly after the assault. Now, attorneys for the two boys who are in custody say they didn't do it. The attorneys pointed out the attackers cannot be identified on video because of the masks and the victim's reluctance to name his attackers initially call his truthfulness into question. In Prince George's County, Scott Broom, WUSA 9.